Um, record, please. Uh, still living in a gangster's paradise. Time's been good to me. Uh, does anybody have a Does anybody have a line that I could say? Help me figure out what to say. You know, things change the same way that the wind does. Uh, life goes. And uh, if you're not there to stop it, who's to say that you're even part of it? If you're not in the problem, you're part of the problem. And if you're not part of the problem, time is of the essence. Life is important. We are not gifted forever. Forever is not within our grasp. Um, so this is, this is it, you know, here I am. This is the thing. This is me. This is what I have to say. This is my brand. There's a, like, no, I don't think I could talk about current events. I'm not going to comment on current events. I don't care. Why? I have nothing to say. I have nothing to say about my comments on current events. The only thing that I want to say are just things that are brand new ideas or the discussion of ideas in a philosophical way or just the considering of the ideas as in the same way you would consider just regular things you talk about, like or regular people you talk about. Because people are ideas, and sometimes the idea of people gets so big that it becomes something grander than that. And uh, Brendan Urie is like an American institution, really. He's like an institution rather than a person at this point. Not, so every pop star is kind of like, like that, and the brand that they make. You know, you could say the same thing about Taylor Swift. I guess maybe it'd be more significant to say it about Brendan Urie. Because people don't consider him a, wouldn't consider him a pop star as readily, even though he is like you would at this point, but it didn't used to be that way uh, because he stuck with it. And when his band started, it was alternative rock. And now his band is the height of pop music. Like Panic at the Disco is a bridge between pop music and rock and roll because the band itself was titled under both genres. And it was basically pop music the entire time. You can look back and understand that their first album was just pop music. Uh, you can see, you can hear that now, but it wasn't called that before. And it's kind of, yeah, I'd say it's a better bridge between them than any other than any other band could say that that they are the bridge between pop and rock and roll. Um, but he himself is like the the transformation of the band into a pop band when the pop uh, like white person pop band is always about the lead singer like maroon five tries to be or was a band when they started out or whatever but it's really just about the main guy if you become a actual like top 40 pop star then it is about one singer pretty much always unless it's like a specialty thing like at least it's been that way for yeah you can have groups or whatever it's just it's you know it's majority the other thing i said is majority the first thing i said um there's uh like capitalism talking about capitalism you know that capitalism is the separation of different capitals that's why it's capitalism. It's like a it's a competition between different capitals where the company uh, you can basically translate the title of them into what their the title of the company into their capital value because uh, their capital value is what they are worth and what their value is as a company. What the value is in their identity is their their capital value and like the capital represents even the way that the company competes with other companies or that identity is competitive with other corp corporations um different identities and uh 
so capitalism is just a competition of different capitals and it's levels of levels of capital and in order for that to happen like a capital the way that it is a capital for a company and it has to be for a company it has to be specific to one company um, because it is that company's capital it's like a it's like a value and it, every company has one value and and the company value term is a capital and and a capital is uh, is what the company is worth. It's that company's capital, but it not only says the value of the company and, and dictates the identity of the company um, and tells every other company what that company is, it defines the company. And not only the title, the, the, the net worth not only defines the company, but it tells... It not only uh, says what's true about the personality of the company, but it also says what's true about the company's relation, the company in the context of every other company. It shows what its competitive value is, is what the capital. So it, it talks about the company in a subjective sense and then talks about the company in an objective sense is what the capital does. So it's an important word. It's a, it's like a, it combines both of those both of those and it's subjective and objective and uh so it's the capital so you have competing capitals and that's what capitalism is and it has to do with these different values that are out there that you can invest in and that you can give that you can give money to invest in even if you're investing even if you're buying mcdonald's burgers at the lowest level you're investing in their company and in the function that their company gives to you like if you're 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 always investing you can invest in these different ideas these different competing capitals and and what they are what their worth is going to determine their capital and then if they're the leading capital then they are they're the winning company at least for the time being they're the leading company because capitalism is about is about determining a winner too it's about determining a winner, whoever has the best capital, because your capital cannot be the same as somebody else's capital. Um, it could be like the same dollar and cents. <laughs> it could be the same dollar and cents amount, but no two companies are going to have the same amount of influence where influence is tangential. Like, I guess, uh, so your capital. But so your capital is the monetary. Your capital is the monetary value, though, thinking about it. The capital is the monetary value. Like, basically what I'm saying is two companies could have the same monetary value and they are still different. They're still different companies by title. So I don't know what that would mean exactly, but that's not, that's because capitalism isn't, doesn't have to be perfect. Capitalism doesn't have to be perfect where a perfect capitalism would would realize an environment where every competing company within the capitalist system had a different value. And so if they all had a different value, they could be leveled off. Everyone could have their own level and the power structure, the hierarchy could be determined indefinitely. But uh, if it's, if there's two companies with the same monetary value, then it's not perfect capitalism because you have a value at which there is a social behavior going on. There's slight socialism going on because two, two companies have the same value. So you basically, you can organize it that way as brackets, like the 60,000 to $80,000 bracket in any company. And this is the same monetary value. Then it's kind of like, uh, it's kind of like it's socialist in that two companies have the same value and therefore are equal with each other where capital, perfect capitalism is gives power to the individual perfect capitalism is about the individual individual is the like if you are participating capitalistically then it is then you have a separate value and you are an individual competing with other like-minded individuals if you have a separate monetary value you do have a distinguished capital if you have if two companies have the same money monetary value um 
then they have the same value and they, in a, in a sense, exist socially because they're not distinguished and they don't have different capitals. They have the same capital. If, if you are in an environment where every company has the same capital, you're in a perfectly socialist environment. So it would the spectrum from, from capitalism to socialism is one of competition to total equality. So it separated entirely separated values, all the values in the system that can be considered are separated from each other and are have different values. And I would say that's the same thing as being defined or finite. The scale from capitalism to socialism goes from uh, goes from all separated values to all, every every considerable element in the system having the same value. And and that's what uh, so it's, it would be hard to say that that is a spectrum from capitalism to socialism because you have something that exists at infinite different levels considering the number of possible companies that could be competing, different levels, different, different uh, values, and different capitals. Um, could potentially be infinity, but you're just considering it out of infinity where infinity is the max number of like you have to consider potential companies too you know like out of out of infinity when you do out of infinity it's just it does go into theoretical because you don't have a pr you only practically have a finite number of corporations to consider that are competing but you have but i'm just saying if you considered the maximum uh the potential corporations competing that's up to infinity and the possible maximum possible number of levels um where levels are uh represented by different corporations and different capitals and different separations of definition and identity. Um, there are infinite potential levels, but uh, with a spectrum, there are not infinite potential levels, but infinite, ele infinite potential elements at the same level. Um, and that would be a comparable idea, The at least the difference. I'm not gonna call it a spectrum because I don't really know. I can you can visualize how socialism exists on a spectrum just socialism the idea by itself because a spectrum involves uh, infinite equal elements that are like a visible spectrum every single shade of color is equal to every other shade of color in value so so spectrum deals with infinite elements that exist within a defined space but that's like subjectivity infinite elements within a defined space um infinite possible elements in an undefined space in an objective space where 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 like-minded individuals are competing and objectifying each other and understanding their place within the structure of 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 difference of value of different definitions and understanding the hierarchy you know objectively they do that objectively but objectively there are infinite there are infinite potential different competitors that exist outside of a space from zero to one, where a spectrum is discussing the space within the individual, where because your subjectivity is determined within the individual. Yeah, it's determined there. It's yes, it's determined inside within the individual, and and there are so there are infinite possible elements that exist within a spectrum though within a space from zero to one and now maybe you might be wondering how i would correlate a spectrum infinite possible elements spectrum into infinite possible elements that exist in a person's subjectivity because that's what i'm saying is a space from zero to one if you consider it as to be within the individual um i would say that those things are somewhat like authorities or categorizations that you can make ways that you define the world around you because you have you have literally everything except for yourself in order to define like everything that you encounter is what you have the potential to define so there are infinite infinite things that you encounter and you and in order for you to be able to define it to yourself you have to put borders around it and those are categorizations you make within your mind in order to separate different words from each other so it's kind of like categorizations or authorities that you put rules boundaries that you put between between different words in order for you to distinguish them because you do have to do that in order to distinguish words because words are specifications ultimately and and so subjectivity that's how i'm saying it exists within the individual and i would call the infinite possible elements as 
uh, different categorizations. You do have categorizations. They're just like, they're, I guess you'd probably say they're a finite number because you only are operating off of a finite number of words, uh, from what you're, from what you have to choose from within your language, you have a finite number of words. So you have a finite number of divisions that you've created in your mind in order to separate those words. And those divisions are something like authorities and they exist within a subjective space and are basically the constituent elements of a, of a subjective space of subjectivity. So you have so you have the space, and the space within the individual is indicative of, of socialism because infinite, you're talking about a, an environment where every single capital is equal to every single other capital. Um, and so that's a socialist environment. And so that's the same thing as every single color on the visible spectrum having the same value or any categorization that you make in your own mind as having the same value. The categorization itself, the rule itself has the same value, which is nothing. A rule has no value because it is the same as every other rule. It is always a rule. It's always an authority. An authority stops at authority and, and does not transfer over into not imagination because it's, it's always within imagination. Well, no. Okay. Well, it's always within the, it's always within the individual, but like, I wouldn't want to, I wouldn't want to say that without substantiating it because it just sounds ridiculous. But, uh, so I substantiated at least in my mind, the, the elements are authorities. The elements are authorities within the subjective space, but I'm talking about capitalism and that capital that there are different capitals because I was just thinking, I was thinking about the word the capital is an interesting word, um, that it, that it identifies the differing values of competing companies. And that's what capitalism is. It defines the different capitals as competing where socialism is equality of all capitals or the negation of capitalism. It is the opposite of capitalism. So because of that, it should theoretically exist on a spectrum of some sort where every transformation from socialism to capitalism is slightly more capitalistic. It's a transformation that is an integral of both socialism and capitalism, but that integrates more capitalism from left to right. If you define your first pole, or if you define the polar boundary on the left to be socialism, it gets more capitalism as it goes to the right. So as, as per the rules of the spectrum, but uh, yeah, so I talking about capitalism and socialism and, um, capital is interesting because it does, it defines your capital city um, in the same way that, well, so the Latin word for it is like caput meaning head. So that's a pretty straightforward description of why capital would be the capital of a state because it's the, it's the head of the state, but as referring to a company's capital, like the head, if the capital were able to be described as a body where it is where it is uh, representative of a corporation, which is basically translated to be a body where it's where, where a capital is represented of a corporation. If you're talking about the head of the capital, that is basically what gives it its value or its marginal difference from any other company. Like it's, it's what differentiates it. And really it's your, it's your intelligence that, that determines that that gives you your money because making money is, is pretty much just you being able to understand what's going to happen in the future, like where you need to be, even if it's something as small as that or what you need to do to sign up. Even if it's just getting a job at a coffee shop, you have to know what to do, what coffee shop to sign up for and what I, in order for you to be in the best possible situation to make yourself successful, you have to, um, to make yourself successful to make yourself you have to like differentiate between different coffee shops in order to find the one that's closest to you that's going to make you the most happy that's going to save you the most on gas money uh in order for you to be the most successful or amass the most amount of money if your goal is just to get them just to get the money from it um so you have to you have to understand what coffee shop will be better for you in the future you have to make decisions the correct way and be in the right places and invest in the right things you know the stock market is entirely that just it's people guessing what's going to happen in the future and you know this is predicting but at a basic level that uh 
that is sort of what makes you money is your your ability to look into the future um, or understand what's going to happen and it, your ability to look into the future is is predicated on your ability to understand how patterns unfold and your how trends what what's going to trend next and understanding the pattern of things so that you can understand how that pattern is going to develop the same way into the future and your understanding of patterns like the highest level the higher that you understand patterns and can see through patterns and uh and other line people's like lines of behavior and stuff like that is what makes you intelligent it's your ability to see around patterns um yes yes so oh, why, why am i talking about patterns why am i talking about patterns well i was talking about that the capital the different the different values of your capital are based on the marginal thing that makes makes you different from everybody else so if you considered that every company exists on a different level like if you if you picture it on a number line and then there's like a bar graph and the bars are one two, three, four, five, six, seven, like the vertical bars are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and on to infinity from left to right. Um, and those are representative all of different values. Your difference from seven to six is basically the capital, is is the important part of the capital for that company, or is the distinguishing feature of, of the capital, or the reason that it is defined as capital is because it is marginally different from any other company. And so seven, is marginally different from eight and marginally different from six and it's better than six and worse than eight and uh but so it's like it's kind of like the authority of the intelligence or the capital the diff the difference the marginal difference of eight is is the difference in the capital or or the or the monetary value or the ability to arrive at a place where you are worth that you know, that's your difference in your ability to make money and your difference in the in your ability to understand how money is is made in, in the future. Um, and so, yeah, so you can see you can see where it's capital, like a capital city. Um, but then uh, the same way when you capitalize a letter, like instead of making it lowercase, when you make the letter capital, there is a marginal difference in the value of lowercase to uppercase. And so when you when you make it uppercase, it's like a, a higher level of prestigiousness. That's why it is uppercase. It's taller. And I guess that is, uh, it's like sort of subjective. It's sort of subjective because you could say, no, actually the lowercase is superior. You could technically say that, but our word capitalize is meant for a raising of the value right and they are they are two different figures in front of you they are two different symbols in front of you so the values are different even if you say the lower cases so but if you're going to look at it that way you have to understand that the dev the definition would call for you to say that that's like a reverse capital because we're defining the capitalization to be the raise in value from cap. I mean, I mean, yeah, that's why it is a capital letter. It's the raise in value, technically speaking, but it is the difference in values also. It is also the addition of values. So it's kind of, it kind of considers both of those. If there's only two values to consider, if you're, well, especially when you're changing, capitalize it. You're changing it from lowercase to uppercase. So that relationship is right there. You understand, you see the relationship between the two of them and the different values right, right away. <laughs> Isn't that something? Wow. Yeah, so there's capital and then there's social and then there's capital. And, and I just wanted to keep talking. I was interested about something before. I was interested about something before. I was talking about socialism and the equal capitals. They are equal capitals. I just want to think about that. It is capitalism. It's just everything is equal, except everything is, all, all the value is shared. But the more that the value is shared, the more that two of the same thing are under the same heading. So socialism 
eventually socialism is an individual too it involves an individual but the entire group that is socialistic is a group and is one group and is one individual you're an individual but you are this you are not you yourself like if you are an, an individual involved in socialism you're under a social a country that calls themselves socialist um so as long as it's under that heading you can understand that they strive for a bigger a much bigger percentage of the government of the government deciding what your funds are so they normalize everybody's funds and make everybody more equal now there isn't a perfect socialistic beautiful democracy to evolve yet there isn't like a social like wow i mean i think that's maybe what communism is 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 it's kind of like describing a perfect socialist state that would evolve naturally um but attempts at communism are really difficult in a in a world where people are prone to mistakes when you're striving for some for perfection you can't strive for perfection because you are riddled with imperfections <laughs> like people and you are because you're you're not you don't even know how power is defined you don't even know there's a lot that you don't know about what it like if you to try to lead everybody under one heading when the world is used to tribalism and individualism and competition among individuals if the world is not prepared for communism and then you try to force this perfect society where everybody for thousands and thousands of years have gone along competing with each other and that's just part of their genetics at this point like uh and you push communism on like you push communism in russia and uh everybody is at least inclined somewhat to know themselves to be an individual and uh then russia makes it so that everything is under the heading ussr and you don't have you basically have no citizenship rights because your like, because your value as a citizen is given over to the value of the the government is given over to the group under which you are are from the group title in which you're in and uh so the more socialist you are the more that your values are you as a citizen your values are equal with other citizens the more that you are not treated as an individual with value uh because it's not because it is distinctly for the equality of everybody's values meaning that everybody is more and more the same in a more and more perfectly socialist state everybody is just everybody would be the same but they would be the same because they're all under the title of the group where the group is the defining element of each one of the citizens of their character like like and in america we're a capitalist society we have separation of values and we have a lot of american pride about being americans we say that we are americans and it's almost like we are also trapped by the group uh, uh america but uh it's not it's not like that it, it is it's very different because we don't have to call ourselves americans it's part of the freedom aspect of it it's like you can be you can go into any one of the like minute different groups that the that the country has to offer you the freedom to be lots of different identities and that's why people are proud to be an american you can have a lot of different versions of things that exist as both uh capitalist and socialist uh those are and that would be the separation of every single individual transforming into the the every single individual having the same value uh where they're where they're all the same and uh that kind of just looks like individuals forming groups and the groups get more and more i don't know you can have you get more and more different groups in the beginning and then and then uh slowly the groups separate i mean slowly the groups connect into other groups to form bigger and bigger groups until you get one giant group you know so they're so the different the different it would be like okay these two companies were had separated values before but then they consolidated 
with each other and uh, another under another the same company so they have the same capital and the same net worth and they're so two previously separate companies now are under the same company heading and uh and and so you have one less competitor of of what you had before if as long as you're in a, an environment where competitors aren't continually being produced but they probably are but you have one less competitor and maybe more competitors were added in the meantime but but uh if you're talking about the transformation from perfectly capitalist to perfectly socialist um you're not considering that you're not you're not considering that uh there's there's uh any competitors being added to the system you're just trying to consider transformation a transformation from capitalism to socialism and that involves um individuals slowly the number of individuals being dwindled down to one as all separated individuals are consolidated into groups that have varying values with each other but at some point then there are you start with all these different groups and then at some point then there are only two groups and then and then they would merge into one so socialism deals with an individual but they just deal with the individual group where capitalism deals with individuals they deal where the entity capitalism is consistent of like their capitalism exists as a group also the same way that socialism exists as a group but uh it's not it's not the subjective manifestation of of this kind of group because because this kind of group that its spectrum is from the the differentiation of all individuals to like the many versus the one like many versus everything united as one united versus separated like that the spectrum from those two opposites where every element is united versus every element is separated which is the same thing as like uh that is really well representative of the difference between subjectivity and objectivity uh because like if you're just con considering the difference between those two ideas so in the same way that i am building for you a sequence of transformations from capitalism to socialism i'm i'm saying that theoretically you can have all these instances between capitalism and socialism that exists on a spectrum that are a combination of both of them and then your order of how capitalist or how socialist these theoretical transformations are uh depends or determines where they fall on the spectrum from from capitalism to socialism where an instance that is a mixture of both capitalism and socialism is basically like uh an entity or civilization or even a corporation that's that's been created by man that is uh that exists well maybe not so much a corporation so just like a it's easier to just picture a country like a like uh china is more socialist so uh china is uh, is gonna fall on the spectrum between socialism and capitalism somewhere uh and uh and it'll be more on the socialist side but i'm saying that in being on the spectrum it is also at least slightly capitalist and it is because it is not perfectly socialist uh if it was perfectly socialist it would be at the polar extreme socialism it would be socialism it would be titled socialism because it would be absolutely socialist and uh china's not absolutely socialist unfortunately uh and that's there's only so much you can do about that when you make a country that's that we all think is really socialist but it's not perfectly socialist and uh you know you can try all you want and like somebody's got to keep the dream alive though somebody's got to get that socialist action yeah so i'm saying that uh the points on the spectrum are there's a lot of theoretical points because there's technically infinite spaces on a spectrum so there's a lot of theoretical points there's a lot of 
civilizations that could have been created as different mixtures of capitalism and socialism. And I'm saying that every civilization that we've created, um, if you are able to define it as socialist or, okay, well, yeah, I don't know. Just consider com uh, civilizations that are capitalist or socialist. Those are the instances that go on the spectrum. So America is also on the spectrum, but is on the the capitalist half, the half that is that is more capitalist than it is socialist of the spectrum. But the spectrum, the halfway point of the spectrum is a theoretical point of reference describing a civilization that is both, that is exactly half socialist and half capitalist. And that is, that is what happens at the middle of the spectrum. The middle of the spectrum defines a theoretical element of the spectrum that is exactly exactly two things at once and so there's a lot to be said there's there's a lot to be said just about what it means to be the point at the middle of a spectrum especially i would say in a mathematical sense uh because it's telling you it's like a it's a philosophical description in an archetypal description of two things being one thing being one element where the two things that are one element are uh the def the defining bookends of the spectrum the thing the two things that you're saying define the spectrum from uh so in this case is capitalist to socialist but but uh if you were to consider the visible spectrum uh and consider the spectrum then from uh Consider the spectrum just for the color yellow, which that would be a subspectrum of the visible spectrum because there are infinite shades of yellow that constitute the subspectrum titled yellow that we've categorized yellow. We've categorized it out of the visible spectrum, which also contains uh, infinite shades of color, but those are, they include all the, all the shades of color. So the subspectrum yellow, consider that, which is also a spectrum. It has two bookends that define it the same way that I'm describing the spectrum that defines capitalism and socialism. Um, and the bookends that define the category yellow are, uh, are, um, orange, orange and green, orange and green, baby, nothing like it. But what I'm saying is in the order of categories, right? It goes red, orange, yellow, green blue violet so yellow is essentially categorized on either end it's cut off on either end by orange and green as long as those are the categorizations that you're making now another interesting thing to note is that the categorizations in the visible spectrum red orange yellow green blue violet are arbitrary you didn't have to make those categories. We just made them where we did. You can put a category wherever and then define a section of the spectrum to be a color wherever you want. It's arbitrary that we made the categories that we did for it. Uh, and uh, a really interesting video to watch uh, is if you look up, well, it's a video on YouTube about the order of colors, the order that colors are are determined across across uh, civilizations like when when they're studying especially like primitive civilizations languages they notice that every single primitive civilization uh, defines colors in the same order meaning that the first two colors that every like every civilization like primitive civilization defines in their language are black and white and then the third color is always red and then the fourth color is either green or yellow where the fifth color is then also green or yellow greener green or yellow whichever one they didn't do the first time um so and so there's it's always it is always the same order across every single civilization but that's because that has to do with the that has to do with the categorizations you make um, but if you consider that they are just categorizations that distinguish red, that distinguish the color red, um, you understand that 
it's it's like you're uh the reason that red is the first color that they see after black and white is because they are defining every single color on the visible spectrum to be red they just haven't placed any categorization anywhere because they haven't developed the intelligence to specify a category and define a new a new word but it's interesting that the that the order of that definition is always the same they always they always place the categories uh at in the same order um but uh yes that's a video you can look up about the order of colors should probably get it for you you should that should get it uh, on youtube um or okay yes so anyway the category yellow is you define its ends at orange and at green as long as those are the categorizations you've made and those are those are the equivalent level of of the category yellow uh like orange and green but anyway so those are the bookends of yellow and and so you're only including within the definition of the subspectrum yellow anything that is considered to be a shade of yellow and then at the point that it fades out that it is now orange instead of yellow is where the def the defining line is and then the same thing for the green side of it but anyway the middle element of this spectrum yellow that you're considering is the most is the most archetypal yellow because it is it's the middle of yellow and everything and it's and it's the point that is the middle the very middle of the spectrum you're considering and it is also the point at which orange has totally faded out uh like because the color orange because you also have to consider that orange the second half of orange is fading into the first half of yellow because they're all spectrums and they're all fadings of different colors and depending on how you've defined it so the first half of the spectrum yellow is intermixed with the like the latter half of orange um and so orange then technically ends at this middle yellow where and green also the very first shade that could be considered green where you start the fading in of green is also at this middle yellow and so and that's descriptive of that the middle yellow which happens to be the most representational yellow because it is the most intersectional and it is in the middle and it's the most archetypal uh picture the top of a pyramid and and then consider that every every corresponding two yellows that are on that are on either side of the middle yellow um that eventually constitute the spectrum are like the the pyramid but that's uh that's going too far into it so ignore that i said that the middle yellow, which is the archetypal yellow, the most representational, undefinable yellow, uh, and most undefinable, it's hard to, that's a harder thing to pin down, especially when you're talking about it that way. But it is, it is, um, it is also some sort of like intersection, intersection of the two defining bookends of yellow, which are orange and green is also two of them at the same time. Uh, is just something to consider but what the only reason i bring all of that up is to say that the middle of a spectrum is is an important it's an important uh explanation of duality of like what the true nature of duality is it's like an archetypal representation of duality and at the point that you uh understand duality i mean at the point that you're defining things to be products is like a where duality is like a product because something that is dual like duality of man that term basically describes subjectivity versus objectivity of man the subjective versus the objective realities unless it's describing right brain left brain which would also be a, a decent description of duality but i don't think that's what it's describing i think it means subjectivity and objectivity but uh, that duality is like a product of two realities in the same time or in, in the same place. So at the point that you're able to understand what a duality is or what a product is, it's like an archetypal definition of a product. And the reason that you need to understand what the definition of a product is 
and maybe the middle of a spectrum can tell you what the definition of a product is. But the reason you need to know that is because uh, there's something to be said about ordering multiplications and ordering products because we are unable to do that right now. And if you can order multiplications, that can get you to, that can eventually get you to, if you understand what a multiplication is and how it is organized, that would eventually lead you to what, uh, to understand what the prime numbers are, where where in my mind the prime numbers are well first of all if you knew what the if you knew what the prime numbers were you could solve the the most important unsolved math problem which is the Riemann hypothesis and and I am interested in figuring out what the prime numbers are and fig but in figuring out what the prime numbers are I think you have to lay a lot of groundwork as to what is multiplication you have to understand what multiplication is and you have to exactly be able to differentiate it from addition where in today's world addition is like we understand it to be very inextricable from multiplication um but uh, so that's that about the middle of a spectrum all of the kinds of spectrums that i'm talking about ones that go at like for all spectrums that go from a uh, falseness to a truth or between two opposites where two opposites are the bookends of the spectrum but so i'm talking about capitalism and socialism and on the spectrum from capitalism to socialism the middle of it is this theoretical civilization that is exactly half capitalist and half socialist so there's a certain absoluteness to that too like i don't think i don't think that that like maybe that is achievable of man like something like that is achievable of man something that is exactly half of both of those it should be achievable because it it exists in an in an attainable space for man to create a civilization it exists because the within of the spectrum is describing finiteness where the ends of the spectrum describe absoluteness in absoluteness towards whatever thing you've defined the spectrum to be they regard absoluteness for the spectrum so the spectrum from capitalism to socialism uh at one end is absolutely socialist and at the other end is absolutely uh, is absolutely capitalist and let's get on that train you know what i'm talking about who's ready to ride that roller coaster i'm not hmm i don't care so so bernie sanders is a socialist and that's that's what i'm talking about now now and the, what's great is that what's great is that there's probably more i was going to say about socialism and capitalism but i don't have to because uh, I have about five more hours to say whatever, if I want to look at it that way, capitalism and socialism. So I got to where I was saying is perfectly socialist society is where all of the companies have the same capital, but that's more, re that's more, don't read into that specifically too much. It's just perfect. Socialism is where all individuals are equal. But uh, so I'm saying that socialism is describes the individual as a group, but capitalism describes the separation of individuals. Um, but individuals as a group would be. Uh, like there's something to be said about everybody contributing equally, everybody having an equal value and everything they do is for the group. Um, but there is nothing to be said about trying to force that on to people. Like if, if you were going to have a socialist environment, you couldn't, you, sh you can't force it on to people. It just would have to come about through changes, but that's, that's the way, that's the way everything goes. I don't want to sound like a socialist, but I'm not, I don't, it's okay. It's okay to like socialism. It's okay to like it. And for a very long time, I was not. Because here's the thing. 
You're not, you can't like socialism, like especially in America, but even I would say beyond the American way of life where like, well, obviously we're not going to delve into socialism. Um, beyond the American way of life, there isn't a lot to be said about socialism, socialism get based on examples from the past. Like, okay. Like if you're a Democrat, you have to recognize that the Republicans have you there. It actually hasn't worked very well ever in the past. And then there, and then, but it does work in currently in Sweden and Finland and Norway, but nobody even brings that up because everybody's like, well, that doesn't count because they're not as big as America. Even Democrats don't bring, they don't, you'd think Democrats would shove that example down Republicans throats. I don't ever hear too, I don't hear too many arguments or too many times that a Republican has had to fend off that argument because everyone's like, well, it wouldn't work here because, and I'm not saying socialism would ever work. I'm not saying socialism would ever work. I think it could only work in a society that is relatively more peaceful. If you think that society is developing in a way that is, that it's going to be less war oriented, um, then yeah, maybe it's time for some socialism. Let's get it going. Like take another crack at it. The thing is that like, why is the world drawn to socialism so much? Why is like, because you had, I mean, for a long time, it was the USA versus Russia, but like, and it was like the world literally was capitalism versus socialism. But that was the, that was the definitive battle, you know, and that was the definitive, that was the, def, the defining way to classify two polar extremes in a philosophical sense and and in a philosophical sense is very often the same thing as in a political sense and and is as far as we make philosophy tangible to ourselves we make philosophy communicatable and digestible by by talking about politics because politics is just philosophy. It's just competing philosophies. But if you're somebody who is interested in talking about ideas and talking about philosophy, um, your outlet for that is to talk about politics because politics is philosophy. And that is a perfectly acceptable conversation to have and a conversation a lot of people have uh, because you can't just talk about straight philosophies because that that to most people doesn't have any bearing on anything. What does have bearing or is something worth communicating and is more practical, but yet still philosophical, but practical, like it's happening to us and it affects us. And it's easy to understand the influence of politicians and all that. Um, the way that you practically talk about philosophy is through politics. Uh, and, but anyways, in, for a long time during the cold war in the 20th century, uh, the classification of polar extremes was defined as capitalism versus socialism. Um, uh, and, and probably the most comprehensive way was USSR ver Russia versus USA, but, uh, it's, pretty much capitalism versus socialism. And then when, when the Vietnam war happened, like all of that, a lot was done to f for on the part of capitalism to prevent socialism because it was a fight between those two competing ideologies. But those two ideologies are, were the polar extremes of each other. Um, and that is why they are so that's why Russia and the U S are, were the two, like I'm saying, I'm trying to explain that the polar, the binariness of that, the polarity of that is it is so two, it is one against one. It is absolute against absolute. And in, at that time, like there's probably been during the course of the history of mankind, a number of ways to classify the binarity 
of the dynamics of the world. Or maybe there wasn't. Maybe the world wasn't mapped enough for that to happen and it was too tribal. It was too tribal for too long in order. But at least in the 20th century, we arrived at this place where there's this, where there's a binary competition in the world because the U.S. and Russia are by far the two major players and they both practice opposite ideologies of each other and are trying to influence the rest of the world with their ideologies and the u.s is going to war trying to stop the influence of the of russia's ideology um and and so the classification so maybe the 20th century is the first time you had that binary a classification of ideologies in the world uh, between capitalism and socialism but I would argue that that battle is not does not have the power that it once did um, and as the world evolves and as time goes on what we will do is transform that classification of binarity into of of two competing philosophies into different things like there will still be two competing philosophies and some in some deviation of from uh from the competition between capitalism and socialism there's just the two competing philosophies will have different names and they will continue to change names and slightly and take on take on new uh personas as time goes on and so to call the the main battle as between of like competing philosophies in the world as being one between capitalism and socialism at this point i would say that that's outdated and it is outdated because we've done that and and the cold war is over and so because of that i would say we are like the polarity of those two things is regressing as time goes on and i think you see that by virtue of the fact that america is a little bit more accepting of socialism now it is a little bit more accepting of socialism and the US and Russia are a little bit more accepting of each other and really when two countries that were far and away the two main competitors it's not that it's not that way anymore like China is such a major player China whatever uh but anyways i'm saying i think that I think that the animosity between socialism and capitalism is regressing and for a number of reasons, the animosity between capitalism and socialism is regressing in this country. And I think that a big reason for that is the loss of influence of the media um, because the media doesn't have the influence that they did before. And they were driving, they were driving a lot of the battle, like they're driving the battle either if even the giants on the left and the giants on the right in journalism drove the battle between Democrat and Republican and they don't and the media doesn't have the influence that it used to and media and journalism and stories itself the the narration of events is distributed evenly on the populace now through social media through social media where the media is socialized and normalized to everybody the same way as if it was the same way as if it was socialism it's just that the fodder of that is being socialized is not uh it's not the rights of citizens or it's not like citizens themselves are being all equated to each other at the lack of their individualities not that that is not happening in social media social media is the equating of everybody's media personas everybody's media individualities are socialized in the sense that they all have this they all have a voice they all have a voice they all have something to say but but that has replaced this distribution of of influence has replaced the strong influence that used to be held by a select few which were these giant media companies so and the giant media companies had the authority on what it meant for something to be a story and for what it meant for something to be journalism and 
they had the authority on that and now their authority has dissolved before our very eyes and they will like uh cnn and fox are gonna be tabloids in five years okay they're gonna be tabloids if they're like they pretty much are now i'm just being nice they're tabloids they're tabloids in five years why do i need to water it down these are my opinions you have to be on point with it like you might as well make a pretty you might as well say that when it's gonna happen in five years they're tabloids Fox and CNN and MSNBC are tabloids. They don't have the influence that they did anymore because the authority of a story, the authority of media is social media and is given to everybody equally. That is a higher level of intelligence that is developed as a result of technology, changes in technology and our society, you know, and it transcends, it transcends media. It, like when you would have thought before that we're going to be subject to the whims of the narrations of CNN and Fox for all of our lives. Obviously, you don't even think outside of that. You don't even think that there is another way that media can be normalized and distributed to everybody. But it happened through because of the Internet, like stuff like that happens. There's like higher levels of intelligence exist beyond authorities and 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 things like that, like. Like, and, and I'm talking about levels of intelligence that are things that everybody contributes to equally yet. And there, I'm, and there like, uh, examples of that society can work together. There are examples of that society can work together. Like if you look at a freeway system or just the road system in a busy city, uh, as you're speeding along the highway, as you're speeding along a road with a bunch of stoplights, like any person in front of you can turn left right in front of you as you're going 50 or something and you will die. So you're relying on every, everybody else in the system to not pull a left right in front of you. Everybody else that's on the road has to not just drive anarchically, anarchically around and crash into everybody in order for the system to work in order for you yourself to survive in the system and and to uh be successful within the system but it's a system of all these all these parts like just regular people then it totally and they work together in order for the system to work and the stock market is the same way it's like a higher it's just a it's higher level of intelligence that's developed that is beyond that we uh, that everybody contributes to and if somebody pulls out it still keeps going and it's 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 always going like that. And it's, it's just out in the ether somewhere, you know, what you're investing in a lot of it, like, especially, and yeah, and just everything that happens that way electronically, it's just like out in the ether sort of, uh, but if you understand the inner works and workings of a computer, you wouldn't describe it that way. Uh, it's not out in the ether, like it tr gets transferred, but like, I'm talking about something like the cloud. It's like in the cloud, the stock market, it's so complex and just evolved. It, it evolved out of, because we have economies and competing economies and competing capitals, the stock market became, it just became, and you can't get rid of it now. It's just something that became, and it is, it is, uh, theoretical in some senses because it just involves because it's entirely dependent on the investment of money where money itself is like what is that when you really think about it it's this debt that keeps getting transferred it's like money is really intangible when it comes down to it and so the stock market who is is money the stock market is money relies on a lot of intangibility and it's and so the stock market is an is an intangibility that just developed out of nowhere in the same way like out of nowhere the authority of journalism dissolved and now we have media like in an intangible way distributed to everybody where everybody has a voice and is the media now to the point that you're not even considering media to exist in any one authority figure because for it to exist in an authority you have to like you're more describing where it exists in as titled as something like as titled as cnn or in 
embodied in CNN or Fox or MSNBC. The authority used to be embodied in these this limited number of figures and these points of reference in, in a finite number of people. But now it's because the authority is dissolved. It's the, the influence is now given to the populace, you know. Um, yes. Right. But I just like that. I, well, yeah, that's, that's the best because the media fucking blows and they're the reason for the division in this country for all that fight that we had. And I would have said, yeah, and now things are different in my opinion. You can still look to CNN and Fox and get your stories, but the more that, the more that you're investing in your identity into somebody who watches Fox News or some other conservative outlet or somebody who watches only CNN, the more that you invest your identity into that is kind of the more that you're saying you, you're investing in the bad, the ongoing battle between Democrat and Republican when the world from a social media in a social media perspective has moved on in some senses, not entirely, but I'd say it's moved on a little bit. And that's why I'm saying like we're more and more arriving at a point where it's okay to have something that is a mix of capitalism and socialism, at least in America, I'd say America is a little bit more accepting of socialism. Um, at least some people, but like, that's why you would see, you would say, is the reason that Bernie Sanders is doing well. Uh, because anybody who is purely socialist the way that he's purely socialist before wouldn't have almost won the Democratic nomination uh, in 2016. Uh, I'm not saying that we're about to be socialist, but I am saying if we are about to be socialist, it's not like, it's not the result of this giant revolution. It's just like, well, maybe we've arrived at a place where we're like, a little bit more okay with it and it doesn't and we also know that it mean it doesn't mean that we're automatically socialist if we elect somebody who identifies as a socialist like we're not going to freak out about it but maybe we also recognize that the authority of government is not all that it's cracked up to be because because uh we elect a president who whose entire platform is I'm going to build a wall to secure the borders of this country and uh, the borders secure the border between Mexico and America. And uh, he's unable to do it because of Congress, essentially. Like, yeah, he would do it if he was able to do it on his own. But there's a lot of checks and there's a lot of checks and balances. And that just goes to show that you can run your entire platform on one thing and still not be able to get it done in four years because the system of government is inefficient and slows everything down and makes you, it incapacitates you of doing anything. It incapacitates you and robs you of your ability to, uh, implement real change. And, and it just like seeing as that his platform was to build a wall and he's unable to do that because of the checks and balances in Congress. That just goes to show that, uh, changes don't like, uh, we've probably come to realize now at this point that government isn't going to implement all the change like, and it is, it's changes in technology that produce differences in our daily lives. Anyway, it's not changes passed down by the government. Um, okay. So what was I saying? I remember saying that one of the factors is that the media is dissolved in my opinion for, for socialism and capitalism being not such a divisive battle, but I'm sure to a lot of people, it is still a divisive battle. I'm just saying, so you capitalize the letter and then that's a marginal capital and kaput means head because cap think about it 
Think about it. Think, think about it. Kaput means head. Today, my advice to you today is to... If for some reason you're listening to this episode of my podcast and you actually made it all the way to the end, uh, my advice to you today is to not freak out because it doesn't matter. Um, and, and don't try to be perfect. I always like to have a life lesson. But if I did, I would have to cancel the podcast today because, because that's not, that's not what we need anymore. Like TV show, cable TV shows from the eighties to 2000 is just life lesson culture. Like full house is the epitome of. Well, I mean, all of it is life lessons. The Brady Bunch is the Brady Bunch is very life lessons. So it's got to be everything from the '60s. It's got to be everything from the '60s to, to like 2000. No, I mean, yeah. Seinfeld is not life lessons. You had comedies in the '80s that are finally like, okay, whatever. We're just. Yeah. We don't, I mean, we're just going to try to be funny. That's what Seinfeld does. They're like, well, fuck morality. Probably one of the first ones to be like, yeah, there it's just, what? it's just a bunch of narcissists and we make fun of them, right? I've never really seen it. But yeah, so if you didn't get anything from that, uh, there's plenty more episodes on my podcast for you to not get anything from. Uh, feel free to subscribe to get all of that content um, that isn't helpful or, or applicable to you in any way. And uh, so, so, yep, yeah, I'll make more episodes and this and done with this one.